Hey everyone, it's Kong again with some more Summit Dare Langrisser Season 8 footage. This time we've got the Round of 32 match between Meow Sensei, who is Free Kong's guild leader, and Moondoggy. So right away we've got some interesting boxes to look at. We've got an Imelda, a Kurtess, uh, we've got Kruger, we've got Estelle, and we've got SP Luna, or Lana, sorry. On Moondoggy's side, we've got... Oh, this is interesting. I don't know if Moon's been running this box throughout the entire actual Apex Ladder season. I know he likes to change his box a lot, but we've got Mariandel and Landius in here. Uh, we've got also got Elma. So Moon is kind of prepared for a little bit more of a defensive counter AoE game. He must have done a little bit of research on Meow Sensei's box, because Meow is a little bit tilted towards AoE on his side. So that'll be very interesting. He's banning, uh, Moon is banning Waytham first, and uh, Meow is banning Rosen, which makes total sense for an AoE focused box. You want to get rid of that uh, Rosen first to make sure that you can get that your AoEs stick, for example, and that you can also potentially get some debuffs to stick. So it'll be interesting to see whether Moon is going to commit to the anti-AoE strat here and get his Elma deployed. I don't, I don't know if he wants to first pick Elma. Okay, he's first picking Kyra, who's another good uh, anti-AoE option. When she takes a hit from AoE, she does heal the rest of the team, or a couple members of the team, herself included. So it is something, it's a bit of an uh, AoE deterrent. And from the looks of this box, I suspect Moon is going to want to get a tank next. Okay, so he is going to get the Landius. And now a real healer. Meow with that Mariandel ban. So Meow gets Christian out as his tank. Uh, he's not going to have a healer. That's fine, though. Now, this is a really interesting defensive box here. This is anti-AoE. He's got a strong tank with an aura. He's got a full healer. Uh, Sage, another kind of defensive pick. His aura doesn't double up with Landius's, but... Yeah, and Kurt has a natural pick there. Uh, Meow at this stage doesn't need Estelle's movement boost since he's kind of committed to this tank here. Gonna hang out with Christiane instead. Okay, and Moon does get Elma as well. So his only DPS, his only real DPS is Kyra. Sage can chip in. But, you know, honestly, this is not a bad uh, pick line for Moon against what he's got here. I mean, he has to deal with this Epsilon somehow. So yeah, uh, predictably a single target Lucretia. The AoEs are going to be a uh, pretty tough sell against basically three AoE healers. Let's stick with one side first. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So normal Lewin. That Lewin can put the hurt on Landius. Uh, and Epsilon as well. And I'm pretty sure this is... Okay, so he has a single target and an AoE on his Kurtes as well. So we've got the uh, double guard ignore on Kyra. And we got the dark guards on Landius. Well, I mean, Meow has a couple a couple things that he can do here. He can basically try to wail on the Landius, or he can hope that Epsilon can assassinate that Kyra.
I mean, Meow has no healing. So, even if he does assassinate the Kyra at that point, he needs to be able to get rid of the rest of Moondoggy's team, because Moon can just keep chipping away at him. I guess Epsilon can go hide and refresh and try to pick off Moon's healers at that point. Luan will be banging on Landius the whole time as well. Right, so Meow can tend to get set up back here. He's not in a rush to get in there yet. Moon pushing the Epsilon back a little bit. Okay, so we're going to see Kurtess get into the action here. Going to go for the single target on Sage. Doesn't kill. Okay, Epsilon's just coming up to hang out and get reset. The uh, act again on Elma was specifically for this Sage Rescue Maneuver. And now we are going to assassinate the Kurtes. Okay, drop near. Not enough to uh, reflect kill this Kyra. I suspect she's going to teleport. Okay, she teleports up. That's to keep her in position for another good assassination attempt, I think. Meow still patiently setting his team up. Alright, so Kyra is charging in for the golem kill. That's pretty much Kyra's job accomplished. She's nerfed Lucretia and she also killed Cortez, so... That's uh, putting in some good work from Kyra there. So we're getting Luin's AoE. There's going to be a little bit of healing off that. Alright, and here comes the first Epsilon attempt, and it's going to be against Liana. Does kill Liana, so that's one healer down. One of the benefits of Moondoggy's loadout here... Okay, he's just popping the shield with uh, Sage. Yeah, one of the benefits of Moondoggy's loadout here is that he still has full team healing capability, even after Liana was sniped. But Moon's going to need to get rid of that Epsilon. Yeah, Lewin's doing his job now. Landius pops his revive. Not enough to heal back up to full. Okay, and Landius goes down. Okay, Meow's stepping on the gas here now. He's got his tank in deep. Uh, he's got his DPS activated. He's already gotten through one of Moon's healers and his tank, so he basically just has to clean up at this point. Kyra has used her skills already. Kyra's going to go for this kill on the Lucretia. No golem, so no revive. He does it from the fog, though. I mean, I think Moon knows that he's essentially pooched at this point, so he's just uh, playing to see what happens. I mean, Sage can be a strong endgame brawler, but he's not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a, a shielded, transparent Epsilon of full Luin and tank. Okay, Moondoggy throws in the towel at that point, and Meow Sensei goes up one to nothing. So, since this is a best of three... Oh, look at this. Since this is a best of three, uh, it's whoever wins two games will advance to the next round. Uh, it'll be the round of 16 for these guys, since this is a top 32 match right now. So Moondoggy changing his box up completely here. He brings in t -Jess, Archon, Sissy White, Helena, uh, Elwyn, and D-Heart. So he's dropping Juggler, Archon, or not Archon, Otto, Sage of the Trees, 
Liana, Mary Andal, and uh, Elma. So dropping a lot of that team healing uh, and going up with more of a traditional, uh, more of a meta, I guess, uh, kind of trade-focused box. So he does still have Sissy in here as his healer, but other than that, we're looking at a lot of DPS units. Meow Sensei, for his part, is dropping the Ares and getting rid of that Kurtes, maybe because uh, Kurtes didn't really perform, uh, but also because he wants to tilt his team back to single target a little bit more. So he's got a healer, and more importantly, an act again, and he's got his favorite boy Omega up here now for some assassination potential. So Moondoggy going with the first pick IBC, my favorite move. Uh, Meow smartly banning out that Kyra there, who combos really well with the first pick IBC. And Meow opening with Himiko. Meow gets the Estelle. And Moondoggy's going to be forced into picking a tank fifth. Didn't look like he was necessarily planning on picking a tank at all, but Meow's making sure he's going to have one at least. From the looks of this team, probably Christian. And we already have a Moby booster here in Estelle, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Meow get his Omega out. Although, who's Omega really going to be a threat to here? I'm not sure how... what Omega's kill matrix looks like at this point in the game. Especially against a player like Moon, who's well known for having uh, very solidly built units. So, let's take a look at what we brought. We've got an AoE in Black Hole. Rest single target. We got Shadow Raid with Angels there. The Mass Attack on the IBC, that's fine. Everything looking pretty standard here. Both players playing back. Not deploying in the front lines. Or is that the front line? You have to move up to here? Is this the back line? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, everyone fairly standard here. Going uh, for the AoE loadout on Lucretia. Kind of makes sense, given that this uh, Christian is potentially in play. So, AoE, 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 AoE technically. And this is his only way to bypass that guard. So he's going to want Omega to assassinate whoever he sees as his uh, most important DPS threat whoever Omega can assassinate. Mine has never been built, so I've never got a real good feel for the uh, the units that are vulnerable to Omega. And other than that, he's going to be hoping to basically just AoE this team down. So Moon has no healers, so the longer he has to deal with AoE, the worse it is for him. But he can also basically try to push forward with his Christian and then rush down Meow's team. And we'll see if Estelle can, uh... I mean, she can't block magic, so she's not going to be doing anything against IBC or Lucretia anyway. So, game two underway. Both players positioning. Moon very patiently setting up his team. He, there he goes, gets that mobility boost and soldier boost. Meow. Getting ready to open up with this Omega, so whatever his plan is, let's see if it works. He's going for one Lucretia life. He does take it! She'll get a revive, obviously, but that counter kills the Omega. That can't be what uh, Meow wanted. I think he was probably hoping for, like, a... I mean, one life off... Lucretia's fine if Omega survives and then can teleport away. So Moon just using that injured Lucretia to pop Himiko's teleport and then run back to get out of the way.
looking at a trade game, Moon is already ahead. Meow sacrificed his Omega and didn't get anything for it. I mean, he got one Lucretia life. Lucretia not able to put much of a dent into this Angel's Cherie, which makes sense. And Dehart gets the stun on Lewin. I don't think Moon expected that to kill Lewin. He was basically there to get the stun. Lucretia's coming back, and she's on cleanup duty, so she manages to take out that Lewin. Nice big damage from Himiko there. Oh, Moon is still in a great position, though. He's got his tank. He's got a fully activated Lucretia here. It's just going bananas. He's got Dehard in his back pocket, who's not going to do too, too much. I mean, I suppose he could, once this uh, teleport is down again, could be a threat to her. Alright, the stun doesn't proc on Estelle, but that's okay because now he can just kill that. Uh, Lucretia, he had the choice to kill the Himiko since um, Dehart popped her teleport. To be honest, that Lucretia could probably also have eaten through that Estelle, so Meow throws in the towel, and we have a couple more box changes. Uh, Moondoggy, who'd you bring up? That's hard to tell. Because it doesn't, it doesn't uh, like change who it says backup on from match to match. It's just like if they were in the backup box, it still shows backup on them. So after Omega's disappointing performance, he goes back down. Someone else comes back up. And... Let's see how it goes. Moon going with first pick Juggler. That's interesting. So after his Rosen was banned in game one, he first picked Kyra. This time he wants to go for Juggler, who's another anti-AoE, like a defensive anti-AoE. So just wanting to mix things up. I do admire that Moon likes to play a lot of different ways. And Meow second picking his tank. since I'm going with the Estelle again. Let's take a look at what we got here. This is pretty interesting, actually. So Moon got double AoE on the dog. He's got gargoyles. But he's not going for the uh, Air Slash maneuver, because we have a tank here, so he can't. And he's running Accelerated Aid Epsilon as well. So he has the ability to lock down a tank, and he has a couple Guard Ignores, and he has one character who can straight up rip through Christiane. That said, his only tank is this dog. Uh, he doesn't need to worry about the fact that he can't guard magic, though. Well, I guess he can after his 3C, but he's just kind of not great at it because magic hurts hurts him so much. 
but Meow's only magic user is this fully AoE Lana. So I guess he didn't think that just the dog alone was enough of a counter AoE threat that it wasn't worth bringing that on her. Especially paired with the Amico. And he's got AoE on Ares as well, so I guess he figures he has enough follow-up that he has enough of a wombo combo here that it will uh, put enough of a pounding on Moon's team that the dog won't be able to keep up with it. I think I see a, a clearer path to victory for Moon's side in this one, just because basically the rest of his entire team does have a way to deal with... Uh... I'm going to stop saying what I was saying just in case this miraculously kills that Epsilon. Yeah, uh, came close. He was down to 10%. As I was saying, Moon has more units here who have ways of getting around the the Christian. So even if Meow were to turtle up with his tank, Moon would be able to cut through that. Uh, but with this opening Ares move, that's basically kind of a, a Hail Mary attempt on killing one or two of those squishy units, but effectively it's just Ares gone now and Moon can reset. Desperate measures on Waytham, partly to help with the cooldown, but partly also to make sure that he's still available as a weapon, depending on what Meow wants to come in with. So he can get back into the mix, reposition. Is this Sherry running in just to kill that sword and then run back to guard, or is she gonna... Okay, yeah, she's gonna go for the stun on Moon's Sherry. Well, I mean, I guess he was going for the kill, but he's only gonna get the stun. So Waytham, thanks to that Desperate Measures act again, gets a chance to take a shot at Cherie, but also not kill her. And now Himiko, with this big 3C on the rest of Moon's team. The injured Cherie is gone, it pops Epsilon's shield. Epsilon gonna be happy just to pluck this Cherie off the map, makes sense. Black Hole on Juggler just to attempt a couple debuffs. <laughs> Juggler's gonna use his other AoE. Oh, and he absolutely obliterates the Lana and the Himiko. That is a big, fat Juggler. So that's it for Meow there. Wow, in the battle of the cat and the dog, the dog wins it with a big, big dog move at the end. Juggler's bark and his bite, both just as dangerous. Wow, interesting matches there. Those are kind of fun ones to watch because the style of gameplay changed between each uh, between each match. It was interesting to see Meow make the attempt with the Omega and have it not work out, and then he made the big, big Hail Mary attempt right at the start of this match with Ares as well, and it also didn't work out for him. Ares is a tough one in this day and age. I mean, Moondoggy didn't really have much in the way of auras to help protect him against a really well-built Ares, but... It's tough for Ares to get flat-out kills from 100% on many units these days. He did come really close a couple times, though. Like, I think it was just an issue of a few points um, separating that Epsilon from death, and then again when the Sherry charged in, Moon's Sherry survived with like 700 hit points. So excellent games, guys. Thank you very much for those uh, very entertaining matches. Congratulations to Moondoggy for advancing to the top 16. And maybe your top 16 match has already been played as well. I'm not 100% sure. A little bit behind on covering these matches. But congratulations to Meow Sensei as well for putting up uh, an excellent fight there. So thanks everyone for watching these games. I'll catch you all in the next match. Happy Langrissing, everyone.